Hey, hey, hey. Welcome to Scared of Beautiful. My name is Plez. Y'all, I am tired. <laughs> I'm over here trying to marathon record. I just finished recording my epi my review, excuse me, of the first episode of this new season of Real Housewives of Potomac. So that will be dropping before this. So if you haven't watched it, go check it out once you finish watching this review of season 10, episode one of Married to Medicine. The title is Southern Sweet Tea. I know, I know I've been missing in action. I've just been living life turned 40 earlier this year, decided that I wanted to go outside, hang out with my friends, do some ratchet stuff with my friends and family, just touch grass, y'all, you know, reconnect with the real world. But two of the shows I actually still watch on Bravo, they're back on Real Housewives of Potomac, Married to Medicine. Uh, I also watched Southern Charm and Project Runway, but that's not what we're here for. So if you enjoy those shows like I do, I hope you join me. I will be reviewing both of those shows for the whole season. <laughs> I'm not going not gonna to disappear this time, but I hope you all enjoy. If you are new here, please subscribe to the channel. Make sure you all are liking the videos. You're commenting. I've been gone for a while, so I need to get back in the algorithm. Also, my faithful, my beauties, my bows, thank you all so much for riding with me, holding me down. <laughs> y'all, I'm not going to try to hold you long. I always say that. I realized uh, I might talk a little bit slow. I am country. It is what it is. But I don't want to hold you too long because I just spent an hour recording the last video. But it's a lot going on in this new season of Marriage Medicine. Now, I will say, if you're new here, you'll get to see that I stick to the show. I just pretty much review the show every now and again, something will pump, pop off on social media and I might do a quick pop in woo child video or something about it, but I'm not one who's going to chase the stories. There are so many other great reviewers and people who keep up with the pop culture like that, that you all can, you know, check out some of their videos. I'm here for the show. I love the ladies on the show. However, I'm not that invested where I want to keep up with every little thing. So if you all want to tell me anything that I may have missed that goes on on social media, feel free to do so in the comments. You always keep me abreast of what's going on. But based on the actual show, what I just watched, I'm here for it. Uh, I'm not here for heavenly per usual. I'm not a heavenly fan, but there were even a few times in this episode where I agreed with her on a couple of things, you know, uh, even a broken clock is right twice a day. So there were like two times when I got with heavenly. So as the episode opens up, they get right into it. They're bringing Phaedra in. First, we see Jack in Heavenly. And I think all of us who are longtime Married to Medicine fans know somewhere along the line, Heavenly wormed herself in as almost like the second face of the show. This time, she's taking front billing. Usually, it's Simone, but it's Jack and, Jackie and Heavenly that we see in this first scene. Later, they're joined by Phaedra, but they are at this store called Ivy and Vault. They're at the opening of it. We learn when Phaedra walks in that she's a partner to this store. Heavenly, of course, has to start where she always leaves off, which is permanent permanently attached to Jackie's behind. I am over heavenly kissing Jackie's butt. Uh, Dr. Jackie is a very nice lady. She's actually, her hometown is right up the street where I'm from. So I'm all for a Mississippi girl. She definitely, you can't, you know, uh, diminish her accomplishments, 
But I really don't like when grown women uh, cater to other grown women in this sense on these types of shows the way that Heavenly does. Jackie can do no wrong when it comes to Heavenly. And she's literally always there to kiss her butt. It's like she's kissing the ring. And I don't like it. So per usual, that's what she's doing. And also shading Toya, being vulgar about Toya. I don't know why the opening scene we're talking about eating coochie, but count on heavenly to be heavenly. And why are you always commenting on what someone else is doing in their sex life, but you never want to tell us about you and Dr. Damon's boring sex life, allegedly, because you can't tell me that y'all are over there having any type of fun because you both don't seem to be uh, the types that have fun. But if you would like to drop some hints every now and again, we would love to hear about you all in your marriage instead of everyone else's alleged goings on in their marriage. This store is a completely hot mess. It looks like something that Phaedra would be a partner in or would invest in. It screams knockoffs. It screams swap meet. It screams pimp players, prostitutes, strippers, stunners, and scammers. All of the things that allegedly Phaedra either has dealings directly with or you know, some of her former clients that used to meet her in the back alleys of Real Housewives of Atlanta to give her her cash payment for their representation in court. Um, hopefully, whatever investment, monetary investment she made was through cash and not through any alleged credit cards that were laying around. Uh, but yeah, the store, it's it's a lot. It's a lot, but love business. I love legal businesses, so I hope it goes well. Um, she's dating. Now, the premise to putting Phaedra on this show is that she's not married to Madison, but she's dating Madison, right? She's dating a Nigerian doctor named Dr. O, and I'm using these air quotes because we can't see the man. His name is allegedly Dr. O. I just want Bravo to stop playing in our faces. Like, if y'all wanted Phaedra back on some show this much, because you put her in the little Housewives spinoff. I, I'm sorry, y'all. I never watched those, so I don't know what the name is. But where they put these old housewife ensemble cast together, and they send them somewhere outside of the country to film for two weeks or whatever. Phaedra was on that. Phaedra has always been a good person in terms of shade and reads. I'll be honest, since I was not a Phaedra fan in Real Housewives of Atlanta, that's mainly because I'm Team Twirl. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm a Kenya fan. Uh, sat out on Real Housewives of Atlanta this year. But Phaedra undeniably is probably second or maybe third to only Nene and Sheree when it comes to memorable moments on Real Housewives of Atlanta, memes, gifs, like Phaedra is good for the one or two liner. I, I always, whether I really like a person or the character they present on the show or not, I always try to give credit what credit is due. And I try to be honest and objective in all of my analysis of these shows, right? So, I, you know, people have been wanting Phaedra back. They think Candy should be over allegedly what happened to her. So I get it. Bravo wants Phaedra back somewhere in the mix. I will say after watching the whole episode, I feel like she's a good fit overall. However, this Dr. O, like, please, if I don't see a real man that does not have a sticker over his face at some point in this season, this is BS. And I'm getting to a point where I'm kind of over a lot of these shows because it all just appears to be scripted. Um, also, this is just commentary in general on 
what I perceive goes on in Atlanta and Houston and a little bit in DC and some of these other places. I love my African brothers and sisters, but the whole Nigerian, Ghanaian, Igbo, it starts to read a bit fetishy. The obsession that some Black Americans put on certain Africans especially on these reality shows, it's a bit cliche and fetishy at this point. It, in Atlanta, at this point, it's a stereotype that the Black American women are after some random Nigerian doctor, engineer, music executive, Akon and his brother, Nim, the whole tribe, whoever. I don't know. All I'm saying, again, love everyone want inclusivity, but there's a way that that is naturally inclusive. It almost looks like they're going out and trying to cherry pick Nigerian men to bring on these shows. I don't get it. I don't like it. Like it feels icky, honestly. Um, but hopefully Phaedra will actually you know, show this Nigerian man allegedly at some point. If not, she need not ever allege that Kim or anybody else has a fake man again in life. Because at this point, it seems like most of the ladies who aren't really married anymore just make up a relationship to get on the show. Sorry about that. That was a little rant. Let's get back to it. The next scene is Cecil and Simone at their house. They were writing the book last year. They decided to take Omarosa's advice. No book for them in the writing process. They realize they're digging up old wounds. If they don't stop digging, they're going to end up divorced. They're later joined by Toya and Eugene. They say that last year really took a toll on their marriage, but that Simone and Cecil counseled them and they are now in a much better place. Uh, the couples get together and they start talking about Dr. Greg getting remarried. And they allege that his marriage to Quad was traumatic. They can't uh, believe that he's going to go through with it and get married again. Then we see all these flashbacks from production. Married to Medicine's production team is high key, petty, and messy, and I like it. I have to admit, I actually, <laughs> I like it. They do their shade and their petty very well, but they flash back to all of this montage of Quad and Dr. G fighting and Dr. G alleging that there was a knife pulled and all of these things. Again, I'm always here for couples who spill their own tea, who talk about their own marriage and the ups and downs and things that go through with it. Toya and Eugene have shared a lot, but uh, this is going to be a little stereotypical as well. Toya is from Detroit. Um, and I, just in all of the financial issues and allegations of cheating and allegations of not not being satisfied in the bedroom i'm pretty sure her and eugene have had some 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 fights some arguments and i wouldn't be surprised if toya has not done the same or worse um they flip back to jackie heavenly and phaedra and again this is gonna be a bit of a rant but y'all overall this whole scene for me it seems like these shows have lost the natural flow. They've lost the novelty of them. This whole conversation where Jackie Heavenly and Phaedra start talking about quad and, you know, then moving into Dr. G and all these things, it really sounded like it was rehearsed and scripted. Phaedra reading off this whole list of, oh, Quad's out living her best life, going on vacation. She's in South Africa. She's in Mexico. Uh, I called to check on her and she was flying out to Chicago just to shop. It's giving fake. It's giving, did, did I miss my cue? Like, Heavenly had to repeat and say, have you heard from her? Have you checked on her? It's like she was missing her line. Like, girl, 
come on. We went over this yesterday, step by step. I, I don't like it. I, it just, everything with this group seems to be very calculated and trying to sell something that they're not, right? Um, fake it till you make it, I guess, but it just, it, they're overdoing it and it's not natural. Um, Heavenly says she can't cater to Quad's ego and then makes another reference. You know, Heavenly is back to being her normal self. She says she's not going to talk about certain things, not going to bring up uh, allegations of the ladies, but she continues in her confessionals to <laughs> make little catty comments and rumors. So she doubles down on the allegation that Quad is either out shopping or out sleeping with somebody else's man. Get out with Like, I don't know what it's going to take. I know what it's going to take. And I'm not an advocate of violence. So I'm not going to say that. But Heavenly really puts 20 on 10 all the time. And I know some of y'all are going to watch this and be like, but Liz, that's what makes the show. That's why we like her. I get it. Y'all can like it. I just don't. I have never been a Heavenly fan. Uh, For one, the tone of her voice bothers me. I've said this before in a different review about a different show and people got mad. Like, she can't control the tone of her vo voice. She Okay, she can't. I also don't like it. It is what it is. Just hearing her grates my nerves. But we're going to get through this. We're not going to make this about Heavenly it's an ensemble cast, so I will deal with it. Um, they have an even more unnatural transition, talking about Greg and this new fiance. Production gets really shady with these pictures of the uh, old ladies meeting the new fiance, and then Phaedra and Quad hooked up with Mister uh, with Doctor Greg when Quad and Doctor Greg were together. Uh, Phaedra says that Greg introduced her to Quad a long time ago while they were courting. She says that she has always been Greg's wing woman. He would bring women home to her or bring women wherever she lived to her to kind of vet them, give them a once over, make sure they met her approval. And Heavenly says, well, Quad told us that you and Greg dated at some point. Um, of course, Heavenly equates dating with sex because, you know, small minds. And Phaedra says, nope, nope, none of that ever happened. And Heavenly says she can't really take Phaedra's word for that because Phaedra lies. Um, and this is one of the times where I absolutely agree with Heavenly. We all know that Phaedra lies. Phaedra came on to Housewives, and this was like the first thing <laughs> that irritated me about Phaedra. Lying. I mean, egregiously lying about her pregnancy. And I couldn't for the life of me understand how a woman in her mid to late 30s at that point in her life was lying about her date of conception. A girl, your mother, even though she's a preacher, knows that you're having sex. And anyone who can count could tell that you and Apollo had a shotgun wedding. So you're not fooling anyone. Just tell the truth. Like stuff like that, you know, as they say, if it don't come out in the rent to come, wash, it comes out in the, uh, wait, rent, it comes out in the wash. Y'all know what I'm trying to say. Um, It comes out. It's done in dark, comes to the light. All those good things, right? We all from the South. Well, not everybody, but the good girls are. <laughs> so, you know, the Southern Bells, as Phaedra likes to say. So stop lying especially about stuff that's easily verifiable. But she said she didn't sleep with the man. I'm not one. I don't like to keep up with other people's body counts. Neither should you. Um, but, of course, it's good juicy tea for everyone. But Phaedra says, nope, never happened. Next, Dr. Greg and the new fiance show up with Simone and Toya over at Simone's house. And we get introduced to Miss Letitia. Her nickname is Sweet Tea, and I like I like that. Um, Greg's fiance, she seems very fun. I like how she came into the house. She doesn't take herself too seriously. And then we get into the mess. You know, they ask how 
did they meet? And so Dr. Greg is happy to let us know that once he got divorced, people were lined up to get with him. And Dr. Greg is a handsome man, right? He's clearly a doctor. So I can see where someone would want to get to know him. But I must admit, I was floored when this young lady admitted to hopping in his DM. I did not get it. I was like, she did what? You did what? And you're showing the DMs? Like you're proud that, oh, I mean, look. Never doubt a woman with a plan. I could not believe that she literally proudly admitted, yeah, oh no, I hopped in his DMs. I offered him my goods. I have everything you, you want and need. That lady didn't want to give you a baby. I will give you all the babies, right? So she went after him hard. And look, she got, she got her trophy. She got her prize. She got what she wanted. So it works. Who are, who are me to judge? <laughs> Shout out to Andrew Caldwell. Like, who are me to judge? Um, she offered to come visit, like to come to Atlanta. He doesn't say they're like, oh, you flew her out. He's like, uh-uh, she came. So that leads me to believe she flew herself from D.C. down to Atlanta to visit him. But she came dressed to impress. And the dress worked. The dress worked. She said she was ready to settle down. She was 31, tired of the men in D.C. Uh, and the 31 made me raise an eyebrow or two because I remember when Quad and Greg were married, one of the big presses for him to have children was that he was, you know, hitting 50. So I had to go on over to the Googles. I had to go to Google. And according to Google, uh, Dr. G is 56. And she's 31. So that's but depending on, you know, date of birth, like actual month and date, they're 24 to 25 years apart. That age gap is crazy. And I know, I know people are going to say, well, it's okay. It's been like that since the beginning of time. Like May, December romances are a thing. This man was graduating college and headed into medical school or grad school. I don't know his education trajectory. When she was born. No, she's not 19. Like, she's not barely legal. But it is, yeah, it's it's interesting, right? Like, this is going to make for good TV no matter how you slice it. Like, I, yeah, okay, you know? Um, Greg says, again, the dress hooked him she claims he said, I love you that first weekend when they met. And he said, uh, you know, yeah, I love the dress. And so they joke with each other. Uh, I like that they're playful together. I can tell she brings out the youth in him. So I like that aspect of their relationship. Also, it may have just been me. But to me, Letitia... If you put her and Toya together in a profile, she almost has Toya's same profile. Like, there's a little bit off straight on. To me, she looks like a mix of Adele Givens and Toya, but they definitely look alike, right? Next, we see Alora and Heavenly. I have always liked seeing scenes with Alora and Heavenly because if no one will put you in your place, your daughter will absolutely put you in your place. Alora, and again, I love production for the flashbacks. They showed Alora keeping her foot on Heavenly's neck as it should always be 
since she was six years old or however she was when they started this show. I think she was more like eight. Um, but they're going to find her dress for prom. Of course, Heavenly talks about how she's devastated that uh, Alora is growing up. She's going to college and they're having this big fight over Alora wanting to go away to school to FAMU where Heavenly went to school at and Heavenly wants her to stay at home in uh, Atlanta and go to Spelman. Uh, that's an age old issue. You know, a lot of parents want to keep their children close, but I'm glad that Alora is standing up for herself and wants to, you know, spread her wings and get from under Heavenly's clutches. <laughs> uh, the dresses were really cute. Um, but she says she wants Alora to have a different life from hers. And so I always like seeing Heavenly with her children. Like that's a soft spot for me. I love to see mothers who enjoy mothering. So I do like that side of Heavenly. Um, Next, we get to the whole down. <laughs> They're telling us about the whole down. Uh, Letitia, this is their, her and Greg's engagement party, the Western glam theme. Production, per usual, is on their petty duty. Shady as hell. They're showing us all of these baby pictures getting us more acquainted with Miss Letitia, and they're showing the baby pictures, again, just to highlight this 24 to 25 year age gap. Uh, Letitia was born in 1991, 1991, and Dr. Greg was born in 1967. Yep. She's from Texas, and so she wanted a party that would really reflect her. She's nervous about fitting in with this new group of ladies, and that's natural. There's so many, like, reasons why this could go wrong. She's a second wife walking into an established group of ladies that are used to the first wife. She's uh, younger. She's probably going to be at least, what? 14 or so years younger uh, than most of the other cast members. So that's going to be a big adjustment. So it's it's natural. And I thought it was cool of her to be honest with her feelings. Like she wasn't trying to play hard. Like, oh, I'm going to come in and be the boss. A bit. You know, like she knows she's a little nervous. Um, and it's going to be interesting to watch because there was already generational tension last season with uh, the attorney, Audra, who, you know, I guess didn't get invited back, her and her husband, uh, fitting in with this older established group. And in those types of circles and groups, you know, for we all know, um, some people can be a little bit elitist, uh, whether that's financially elitist or educationally and intellectually elitist. So... We will see how how Miss Letitia stacks up uh, and is able to, you know, contend with these ladies. Next, we see Dr. Jack and Heavenly uh, FaceTiming, and they are already giving this young lady the blues, talking about her behind her back, critiquing her for naming her engagement party the whole damn. And look, <laughs> let's be real. It's a double entendre. It's tongue in cheek. It's a whole damn because... It recognizes her Western, uh, not her Western, her Texas roots, right? Uh, but also, she's coming off the market, right? There's a whole damn. <laughs> and because I think of the generation and the age group that she's in, that's funny. Like, that's cute. That's not, like, it's not really that serious. I know I'm not a hoe, but, you know, it's it's funny. And, you know, we know Jackie and Heavenly are not the ones who actually like to have fun. I'm sure Toya liked it or thought it was cute. Um, but Jack and Heavenly, absolutely not. Um, Jackie starts saying when she met her at the golf tournament, she was wondering if Greg was her babysitter. Mm -hmm. Boo. <laughs> um, and then Heavenly says she's a Target girl. She doesn't know about labels. She only sharps at Target. And so, yeah, it's more of the same hazing that Ardra went through, you know, where she got her fashions 
it's going to be interesting to see how she shows up in the cast. Is she going to be spending all Greg's money trying to keep up with Dr. Jackie and Dr. Simone? Well, not Dr. Simone, because Dr. Simone got the coin, but she doesn't spend it on the fashions or stylists. So, you know, she's going to see if she can try to keep up with, I guess, Toya and, and, and Dr. Jackie. Uh, Toya and Simone are riding to the party together. Toya says that Heavenly seems to have made somewhat of a change on her YouTube and social media, but her and Simone are skeptical of how long that's going to last. The engagement party, it's the party, the part that we've all been waiting for. Um, Toya insists on shading Eugene at every turn. And at this point, I'm starting to wonder if Eugene has a humiliation kink. He has to like it at this point because she constantly, whether just amongst the ladies or in his face, talks down on his bedroom game. She's like, oh, you know, they're riding the fake bull, posing for pictures. Yeah. Oh, you learned how to tap ass all of a sudden? Like, and sorry, y'all, I kind of censor myself just because I don't like to cuss in mixed company. My mama watched these sometimes, and I try not to cuss around my mama. Um, But yeah, so <laughs> if you're new here and you're wondering why she just won't say the word, uh, that's why. So um, look. Each marriage is each marriage. And I know it's like, oh, well, you can't want, have it both ways. You want people to be them real selves. But then you also want them to censor themselves. I think healthy sharing is appropriate. I think Toya and Eugene sometimes overshare. And I do believe there are, for me, there are parts of a marriage that should be protected, right? It's one thing to have girl talk off camera with your girls. But at this point, 10 seasons in, we all know about Eugene's performance or lack thereof. And it's all fun and games until other women repeat what you've said out of your own mouth about your husband or... For Eugene, a man tries your wife because she's basically screaming to the world that she's unsatisfied. She says it every season in some way or another. Um, so although somebody's like, oh, you're reading too much into it. That's a joke. Like, yeah, nah, there's almost truth. in. I mean, there's truth in almost every joke. Just being honest. And Toya does it too much. Like, I, I, if I were Eugene, would have a come to Jesus meeting with her about that. Um, next, we see Letitia has a fraternal twin named Kanisha. So she shows up to the parky, party. Excuse me. Jackie comes in alone, and Dr. G is like, Where's Curtis? Uh, Curtis is in the Dominican Republic. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Uh, you know, I know Curtis and Jackie have been healed. They've been through counseling. They worked on their marriage, but I'm not going to lie. I, I probably would take issue with uh, Curtis going to the Dominican Republic. If you know, you know. Um, Jackie says that she's used to being this being Quad's home and that she feels uncomfortable. Uh, it's clear that Sweetie has transformed the home. Uh, and I like it. Sweetie is letting y'all know I'm here. There's a new queen on the throne, right? However, again, production being production, if you looked at the pictures, there really was not that much changed in the house. Like, 
it looks like they changed the 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 purple paint so it's not the purple room anymore and i actually liked it because it lightened the house the house was very dark and gloomy with the paint and the decor that uh quad had in there when you compare the two pictures together but other than the paint and some of the wall decor it looked like the same house so jackie is doing too much on that end next we meet some more heavenly friends Dr. Alicia and Dr. Kima, they are a dentist and oil surgeon couple, and, a, and apparently we met them in D.C. a few seasons ago when they were there during the COVID year and stuff. Um, I don't remember them, so I, they clearly didn't make that big of an impression, but welcome to the new group. You know, I guess they're appearing as friends of or friends to the show, so we'll see what they bring to the table. Uh, Phaedra comes in, and of course, Phaedra loves a theme, so she's there in her fuzzy pink hat. It was definitely, again, giving me pimp vibes. I think uh, she got that from the store that she's a part owner in. And she talks about, you know, again, this is what I'm going to say about Phaedra. Phaedra is always going to bring the comedic relief. I laughed out loud, literally, when Phaedra talked about Sweet Tea bringing this Texas energy, big Texas energy with these big black panties on under them white shorts and her little booty. Now, little booties matter. So I'm not going to shade that girl's little booty, but the big black bloomers were <laughs> seeping out from under those white shorts and her sister, some of her friends, should have pulled her coattails and said, uh-uh, girl, we, we, you can't go on national TV like this. Tuck them in, buy a smaller size, get, get a bikini brief, do something like I understand white on white. You, you're, you, you know, those shorts probably weren't the best quality, so you don't want anything to show through and everybody seeing your butt on national television. But they could have been a little bit smaller. However, don't go shading this girl's booty. She has a nice shape. It was enough to bring in Dr. G, and hopefully it'll be enough to, you know, he, he liked it. I don't want her going to Atlanta and getting the booty on the back that everyone else has. Please do not go and get the Dr. Miami or the Dr. What's his name? Dr. Curves. Oh, Lord. Please don't get the Dr. Kerr special, Letitia, sweet tea. Keep your little booty just how it is. We like it just like that, girl. Don't listen to Phaedra. Don't listen to Phaedra. Now, Phaedra's is, is allegedly the real thing, you know, but mm -mm, don't go buy one. Your booty is fine. Um, the men then, we, we flip to them. They're complimenting Eugene on his weight loss. He says that Toya got him on Ozempic. Uh, I, I had also noticed that Eugene clearly hit lost weight. He's looking good. I pray for everyone around here that, you know, are utilizing those things. And I know, you know, y'all like to get real messy in the comments. Girl, you can use some. Uh, yeah, no, I don't. <laughs> Whenever something quote unquote new comes on the market, particularly when doctors start using it off label, I just kind of worry about the oversaturation of the market. And I wonder later on, you know, three, four, five years down the line, if we won't hear those late night commercials that we all know about that says, if you took Ozempic and you are now experiencing blah, 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 please call 1-800-SUDAY. But like, I, I don't like when medicines saturate the market and become so heavily marketed. Also, people who are real diabetics need their medicine. So um, I hope Eugene did not have diabetes. And I know he didn't use that brand name. He said the semaglutide shots, but they're all the same thing, right? There's, it's all the same thing at the end of the day. But I will say Eugene looks much better. I hope his health continues to get better. He, both of them say it has definitely helped his stamina in the bedroom and I'm happy because yet again, <laughs> Ty, uh, Toya and Eugene are letting us know that she was not being satisfied. And so huh, now 
it seems that he is getting his stamina back. Um, and Eugene admits that his weight affected his performance. He would be over it, ready to get it done. His back is hurting. He's out of breath. And Toya would just be like, I don't want, I don't need, I can stand no man and man. I don't want no man and man. <laughs> um, like I said before, right? I feel like there's a balance between sharing and oversharing. And I think for me, a lot of times Toya and Eugene cross that line when it comes to stuff like this. Because, look, Dr. G was just saying that his DMs were popping. We know Curtis's DMs were popping. Uh, a few, you know, seasons ago when they did their reunion and Simone is yelling at all the men about women being in their DMs. Do, don't think that. I'm sure Eugene had people in his DMs as well. Like, big, goofy, no matter what you want to call him, Never underestimate a man, a woman or a man with a plan. But in this instance, a woman with a plan who sees that this is a hardworking man who's willing to work three, four jobs while his wife just like sits there uh, and runs up bills and changes houses every other season. Women see that. They want that. And if not all women, you know what I mean. Y'all know what I mean. Them, them hussies. The hussies see that. And they want someone to do that for them too. And you're showing where there's weaknesses in y'all's chain. So stop. Like, it would be one thing if you've, if you've made one or two little snide comments, y'all beefing, you know, you want to get back at him. But this is every season, right? Next, the men are congratulating Dr. G on moving forward with Letitia. Letitia's real friends show up to the party and we get introduced to them. Heavenly then, who, like y'all said, count on Heavenly to step in and, and, and stir it up. So Heavenly asks Letitia what she likes about being engaged. Letitia says, oh, well, I like that I have more access to the money. Phaedra says her gold digger meter is going off. And I think everyone's was, right? Sweet T makes no qualms about it. She walked in that big house with her little suitcase and she was like, oh yes, oh yes. This is the life for me. She was, she was all in, right? Heavenly asked her, has anyone ever called her a gold digger? And she's like, no, not really. And so, so it was like, no, like who has ever called you a gold digger? She's like, well, no one. She's like, well, say no. No one has called you that. Again, young sis, they are coming for you. So head them off. Um, she's young. She'll get to it. She'll, she'll start to read the signs, honey, because these ladies are setting her up every time. <laughs> Heavenly says, this is the second time where I <laughs> laughed at Heavenly. Heavenly says, this girl is digging for copper. She's never seen gold. Quad was a gold digger. Sweet Tea is digging for copper because she's never seen gold before. Um, and the men then start talking about how the women's conflicts on the show um, and in their interactions sometimes trickles down and uh, affects the men. Toya then brings up Quad at this latest engagement party. Um, and she wonders why Quad won't come around. Y'all know why Quad ain't coming around. Why would she come around? And y'all have befriended her ex-husband and now his new fiance. Come on now, stop being silly. Um, Phaedra says, well, you know, I don't think Quad has any animosity. She's trying to put Sweet Tea, um, any issues or qualms she may be feeling to rest. And Toya was like, well, yeah, because I was wondering, Phaedra, are you representing her for the DUI? And everybody's like, what? What do you I like? Where did this come from? So allegedly, Quad Web, I didn't go to the Googles and check, and I ain't been checking the blogs. So, you know, according to Toya, Quad got a a, a DUI, and I, I'm just not understanding why they would go to this level of conversation. Again, I get it; it's messy, it's provocative, it gets the people going. But these people are just rude. And I'm not used to people being <laughs> rude like this um, at someone's party. And neither is Dr. Jackie. Y'all notice, 
I like Dr. Jackie. But Dr. Jackie, as lots of fans have said, but it becomes more and more evident every season, she just sits there and collects a check. Everyone else keeps up the mess. She doesn't even interject. Like, if you're so prim and proper, you should use your voice and say, ladies, I don't think we should. You know, let's talk about something else. Are you looking forward to your wedding? Have you picked your dress out yet? Like, who is the... She never tries to steer the ship the wrong way. Like, she sits back and judges, but she never uses her voice. So, at this point, I'm kind of over Dr. Jackie. Um, Letitia, though, sweet tea, steps up and steps out. She redirects the ladies and lets them know, look, we're not going to do this. We are not about to make my party all about quad. Like, y'all got to find y'all something else to talk about. There's a new sheriff in town. We're not doing that today. And I was here for it. Oh, now that's how you clear up it. <laughs> I was here for it. Like, yes, girl. Stand up for yourself. Sweet T says that Greg is settled. He has his practice, and he's now about to have a family with her. So get with it. <laughs> she thanks Simone for introducing her to Dr. Davis, who is a specialist uh, and deals with fibroids. Again, Dr. Heavenly has to jump in with her lips tooted up to Dr. Jackie's behind and handles that um, steps in to say that Dr. Jackie handles that. Why wouldn't you, you know, refer her to her? And Dr. Simone reiterates, I referred her to a specialist. Heavenly is so educated, but she acts like she doesn't know what words mean. A specialist is different than a general surgeon. Um, and that's between her and Letitia. Heavenly asks, well, why didn't you keep the money in the friend group? And Simone's like, I need Heavenly to stick to veneers. And I'll finish the rest for you, Dr. Simone. Not vaginas. Stick to veneers, not vaginas. Very simple. But she's not going to do that because she wants the chance to be able to say, Oh, I was fighting for Jackie, and oh, I'm Jackie's best friend. All she can. She is going to figure out a way to drive a further wedge between Jackie and Simone at every step. And it's disgusting. And y'all wonder why I don't like her. It's one thing to stir the pot, but this lady is always in the middle of something. Like always, that's completely unnecessary. This young lady is basically revealing she may be having fertility issues, even though she's just 31, because she has fibroids. And you're sitting there talking crazy about why she didn't refer her to Dr. Jackie, then has the nerve to say, well, Dr. Jackie has all the patients in Atlanta. She don't need no more. Right. So why bring it up? Dr. Jackie's wait list has to be at least six months out because she literally sees all of Atlanta. I don't know if there are any more vaginas left at this point. Like, Dr. Jackie sees everyone, right? So, Sweet T's twin sister has to step up from all of their bigger fights. She cleared the room, shut the ladies down, like, shut up. This is her house. Let her talk. That's right. Stand up for your sister because these over here, they're definitely going to try to <laughs> try to run over her at every step. Um, Sweet T says, look, I went to Simone because Dr. Greg spoke highly of her, said that she's like his sister. So whatever her referral is, that's where I'm going. And Dr. Jack agrees, like you'll get taken care of again. Heavenly speaks up more for Dr. Jackie than Dr. Jackie does for herself. Phaedra wants to clear the air and Heavenly um, <coughs> Heavenly again steps in and is like, oh, so you were sleeping with Greg? And she's like, no, no, I was not. Just Lord, the problem child, the problem child. And I will say, right, if I'm being objective, 
and we're talking about what makes TV. Heavenly is a good person that you would want on this type of show because she is divisive, right? You either hate her or you love her. No, no in between. Um, everyone, uh, we see them rehashing, talking about the party. Heavenly again takes a dig, says the girl's food was nasty. It was nothing like what Quad would have cooked. Uh, Phaedra's sons are getting so big. They're so handsome. They've always been so handsome. And Mr. Aiden seems to be investing money in Bitcoin. Um, and he says he made $90. Phaedra's like, well, you told us. Uh, you were going to be making millions. Um, never going to talk about anyone's child. Uh, but when she said that, I, you know, I'll just say, I hope this apple rolls far, far away from the tree. Like, I need the tree to be at the top of like an obtuse angle heel, like, okay, wait, my hands aren't working right now, but y'all know what I mean. All right, so this is the tree. I need the apple to fall and roll all the way down. All the tree, roll this way, little Aiden. Mm-hmm, tree, tree. We know who the trees are. Let's roll this way, little Aiden. Yes, yes, yes. Um, Don't promise people returns on their investments, right? Investing is risky. You can't really promise returns. So, yes, roll away from that tree. Lastly, Letitia and Greg, they're in the car. Three weeks, three weeks until the big wedding day. She uh, lets us know that she was not happy with the party. She feels like they made her whole party about quad, and she's letting them know, yeehaw. There's a new sheriff in town. She's not going to take it. And I am here for it. I'm here for it. I'm here for all of it. Stand up. Let these women know. Don't, you know, don't let them get to you. Don't let them see you sweat. I'm I'm here for it. I'm invested in this season just off this first episode, y'all. They're going to get their marriage license. They're all happy. Their smiles. He's talking about how she's his peace and he's in a new place in his life and he's ready for this new beginning. And then we see a whole montage of all the crap that's going to come. <laughs> and I'm ready to watch it. So I hope y'all are ready to watch it with me. I will be here every Hopefully, Monday and Tuesday, I'll review Real Housewives of Potomac. Let that drop. The next day, we'll be married to medicine. So, like the video. Comment. Subscribe. What do you think about it? Do you think Phaedra's a good addition? Are you liking sweet tea? Do you think the age gap is too much? I do. But those are my thoughts. Y'all, I love y'all. Uh, thank you for joining me. Make sure, again, like, subscribe, and I will see you all next time. Bye.